Hey everybody, I've been getting a lot of questions about the way I do masking, so I thought I'd just do a simple little masking project for you today with some watercolor and some life advice. I'm starting with my Fabriano Cold Press Artistico Extra White Watercolor and this adorable stamp set from Ink Blot Shop that's out today. My video is glitching. I'm not sure what's going on on my phone. So if it looks like it skips ahead, that's not editing. That's something weird with my app. To begin with, I'm going to stamp this adorable little mouse from another Inkblot Shop set. I will put the link below. And I'm stamping him in Versifying Claire Nocturne because that is perfect for cold press rough watercolor paper. I've also stamped him on my favorite masking paper. This is the most inexpensive masking paper you can buy. And I cut out just his bottom half. I have a little strategy to work with this floor that will become apparent in just a second. So I need to position his feet on a square that's going to remain white because I need you to see his feet, because a footless mouse might disturb you. So this way, when I stamp the floor and I paint the darker squares, it won't interfere with the mouse. Once again, I will stamp this in Versifying Claire. It's such a cute little image. So there are indoor and outdoor ones, but I love this checkerboard floor. So this magnet I bought at Home Depot. I, this is before the bar magnets came out and you can see it's the wrong height. So I'm not getting a good impression in the middle, but that's okay, Misty to the rescue. Now I will take this little guy out. So that's the simplest masking. I can do more complicated masking in other videos. And you can see I just left my last project on my mat. This is how I actually work. So why not have it in my videos? Now I have the Lydia split from my Daniel Smith split group that I'm going to be painting with today. I'm not using very many colors, but this is 42 of my favorite Daniel Smith pigments that I use all the time. And I will be using Mayan dark blue, which is a gorgeous color that you can do all kinds of fun things with. And then I'm going to talk to you. I'm just going to paint every other square. But I'm going to talk to you about your imagination. So no matter what happens to you in your whole life, it's never as bad as what you imagine. Your imagination is not always your friend. I love the stamp that says worrying is like praying for something that you don't want. Because that's true. Nothing is ever as bad in real life as it is in your head at three in the morning. So this card is sort of an illustration of this. This mouse is having a hard time and we're here to support this poor little mouse. But his imagination, which I'm going to paint in, is kind of looming over him and making him more anxious than he should be. So I'm going to give this mouse some little meditation exercises to do to kind of recenter himself. Go back to reality. But that is the theme for my card. Now the little squares that come towards the front, I'm going to paint a bit differently. I'm going to have them sort of fade into the foreground because that's what the image itself does. So I'll add just a little bit of water and make those more fady. Is that a word? More fady than the other ones. And have them just drift off towards the viewer. This is a number two Escoda Versatile brush. These are my favorite brushes. I can't wait to see what the YouTube auto caption does with those words. That's always fun. I'll paint just a little bit of this square sort of abstractly. Now you see me drying off my brush with my hand. You know that's my habit. I don't recommend that you do that, but that's what I'm doing. 
and then I go to make a terrible mistake. Oh my God. Why did I put blue in that square? <laughs> this is in real time. So you can see me saying, what the heck? Now, this is a moment where I'm imagining that it's going to be worse than it is, just like I was talking to you about. It's like the card made that happen. I could have just flung this into the trash dramatically and stomped around the house. But instead, my end, dark blue, can be lifted up with just a little bit of water. And the very faint blue that remains from this little error actually ends up looking like his shadow when I'm done. So it's all good. I add a little bit of magic eraser too, just to get the last little bit off. So see, I imagined that that was going to be a terrible tragedy. And in fact, it was not. So I'll speed the rest of my painting up. Now that you know what I'm doing, this is a beautiful dark blue pigment, and it is on the cool side. So I will make the mouse warm, which is funny every time I say that to myself. I think of a warm mouse. But to put that contrast in, this is a very tiny image, as you can tell. This is my smallest Escoda brush. And I'm being very careful to paint these little squares. And the mouse is small as well. So in a small space, you still want to maintain the play between warm and cool colors and even kind of bump up the contrast between those two, even if it's not a realistic color for the mouse or the floor. But I didn't want to do black here because if I'd done black, it really wouldn't have mattered what color I painted the mouse. It would have just been sitting on a black and white surface. And that isn't nearly as interesting as a warm colored mouse sitting on a blue themed floor. So I'll fade out these last couple. I love the way this looks. I can envision every stamp that I own sitting on this adorable floor. And of course, the others in the, the scene as well. Okay, so that's all good. So now I'll paint my mouse. And first, I'm just going to put a little bit of water down because he is so tiny. I'll be able to sort of blend for a while in this small space because he's pretty easy to paint. So I'm starting with sort of an underpainting for him. I want it to have a very reddish tone underneath. And then I'm adding a little bit of quinacridone deep gold which is such a beautiful color. And then a tiny bit of permanent brown, which has a real warm feel to it. And see, you can see that contrast happening. I just love that. I'm adding a little bit of rhodonite, which is a stunning pink to his ears, because as we all know, mice have pink ears, people. And then a little bit of sepia, or, I know there's a lot of controversy about this word, sepia, so I'm going to say it both ways, so I don't anger the YouTube gods. I say sepia, that's just how I've always said it. I say a lot of things weird, so, whatever, it's dialect. More sepia around the edges, and a little bit of the road night on his belly. I don't know why I think his belly is pink, but it sure is cute. Now, this is my favorite mechanical pencil. It has a very hard lead, and it enables me to make very faint lines on a watercolor paper, which is how I do my watercolor sketches in my journal. And I'm going to draw just his basic shape behind him on the wall because I'm going to paint his shadow, which in my little story for this card is his worry and his anxiety and his overly active mouse imagination. I'm going back to the Mayan dark blue for this, and I have the giant silver non-slip craft mat on my desk. I freaking love this mat. And I'm mixing the Mayan dark blue over to the right. But I wanted to zoom in on this video because this is a pretty small image. So looming over this mouse is his shadow. And his worry, which is five times as big as he is. But after he does my little meditation exercises, he's going to be just fine. So I don't want you to worry about my mouse. But you just want to get the general shape 
of the image. I need to add a nose for him when I'm done, but I'm just sort of getting his ears and then the back of his body and his tail. I wanted it to be significantly bigger than him because wait until you see this <laughs> sentiment that launched this story about my little imaginary mouse. Well, he's not imaginary. He's right here. Y'all can see him. He's a real mouse. He's just a stamped mouse. He's a flat mouse. So I'll paint that in behind him and fill in behind his little tail. And see what I mean about the blue and white squares not covering up the actual mouse? I looked through a lot of my little critters to find one that perfectly fit on this floor. And this little guy was the bomb. So I'll just make sure that the shadow color is sort of even. And then I will add the rest of his little face. I love his droopy little face and his nose. It's so cute. They have such a cute shape. Every animal in this set has an adorable shape. So I'll put that just over his ear because the light is shining in a way that you won't see shadow underneath his face. Just up and to the left. Look how cute he is, but he's so sad. We got to cheer this little mouse up. There we go. So I'm going to put a little round thing on there for his nose. Add a little bit more color back here so it's even. And he is done and ready for the sentiment. Now, I, this card is going to be on the My Sweet Petunia blog today. These stamps are new as well. This wood grain envelope, I like to do matching envelopes with my cards, is so cute. But I want to show you a fun couple of ways to do your washi tape. You've seen me use this little tool before. And yes, I always stick my washi tape down crooked. This is actually why I need these tools. So watch me struggle with this. Still get it crooked. And then put it back down. But I also always tear it crooked. And so I've shown you before this fun little tool that's actually supposed to be a stamp block, tears your washi tape so perfectly. So you just put it down and then it gives you a nice straight edge to tear against. So head over to the My Sweet Petunia blog for that card today. But look at this little thing. This is like a tape cutter. It's sort of like the little blade right here is a lot like what you have on saran wrap or something like that. And you just put it around your roll of washi tape and then you can say, okay, I need a piece of tape this big and just tear it off and it's perfectly straight. So I love this thing. I'll put a link to this below as well. So I paired the I can't even sentiment with my little anxious mouse. And this is the card you can see on the My Sweet Petunia blog today. Thanks so much for watching.